For now, let's escape into the world of Loverman. Imagine a late night bar in a hotel or cocktail bar, just four or five people, lost souls just hanging on to their whiskey glasses, musing about lost loves and lost dreams. That's the time when we play cocktail music like this, just enjoying this, uh, the slow tempo and the atmosphere the voicings create. No no fast arpeggios, no um, whatever. That will just wake people up from their dreams. And this is what it also makes it easy to play. So after the rather hard Georgia, this is uh, easy to play cocktail piano, but with great effect just for that late night atmosphere. You just have to imagine this bar and you are standing there, you're sitting there. Anyway, you can stand on the piano, but uh, I would sit and just press these keys. And turn. Enjoy and take care.
So, welcome to my helping section for Loverman. Uh, an easy play piece to learn. I've made it easy, but we really enjoy the sound of the, uh, of the voicings. We don't always want the, the fireworks. I will use uh, the opportunity that comes from that to make a little lesson of what I'm doing here and how I did it and why I did it and how I did it but especially why I did it. <laughs> okay, let's start. Uh, of course, the AAVA form, um, as opposed to, let's say, the, the 12 bar blues form or the whatever forms there are, the AABA form is a very old form, uh, which means the verse is repeated, then comes the middle part, and then the verse another time. It's the most common form in standard, in jazz standards, which this is one example of uh, Billie Holiday sang it most famously. In all of this, in the whole piece is we have the melody and we have the bass and uh, instead of just having the melody here and jumping and doing the voicing, bass, voicing and melody, I did it the following thing. We have the melody, we have the bass and the voicing is done with two hands. So over here, see both hands in the middle here. Melody, bass, again, here, voicing here. So that's the style here. It sounds warm if you have this together. It doesn't sound as pompous as doing like But that's what we don't always want. We don't want to wake up people when they are already um, having their um, head on the table. And it sounds intimate and it's your benefit. It's your benefit. There's not much business here. And so then we come to the theme. You see how warm it sounds. It's already nice. It's already nice. You could already order the first cocktail. A brief look for those of you who uh, care for the harmonic structure. I chose this also uh, because, well, first it's a classic and we have the D minor 7, G7, which is the 2-5 of C major. We don't go into that detail, either you are interested and then you know already what I'm talking about or you just put my voice on mute and go and have a, whatever, do some gardening, do some gardening. Um, so we have the D minor 7 G7, which is 2 5 of C. Another time we don't see the tonic, the C doesn't resolve. Then we have the G minor 7 C7, G minor 7 C7, which is the 2 5. If you saw my other cocktail piano tutorials, then you know the 2 5 is the absolutely dominant um, chord progression in jazz 2 5 or 2 5 1. Here we just have 2 5 2 5. So it's an easy piece to learn these basic 2-5 combinations, D minor 7, G7, G minor 7, C7. And then we get offered something by the piece that invited me. Oh, what does it remind you? It invites me, invited me to test bluesiness on this because it feels like, yeah. They're both seven chords, F7, yeah. And then I tried the blues game. Oh yes, it's true. So if a song is offering you this with this two seven chords that remind of a brief blues progression, then take it, take it. If it's offering you different sound, you make it because we want different tastes in, the, in an arrangement. And if the composition itself is is uh, leading you to this to a new sound here, lover man, with these chords, we take this invitation, and you will see a bit later that um, I have a bit of blue scale here, and it sounds fabulous. So, and then comes the A part again, easy last A part before we go to the um, second chorus. That means A A B A. Ah, no, no, no. Ah. Hold on, we have the B part, of course. How could I forget this? <coughs> there I chose again a different um, uh, color 
the same principle as in uh, Georgia. We go into arpeggio mode um, to get this different uh, color. It stems from the so-called, uh, I think, Alberti bass. Alberti bass. We use it still a lot, a lot. So, and it has this tender, fragile thing. And imagine playing this half past three at night. Um, everybody left already. is the descending um, bass line you know it's still called the bass line because the lowest note there is so it just goes chromatically other it sounds great and it's totally easy to play now you know this was the female's voice Hello, you want to really finish or quit me? You want to break up? And then comes the male and answers in the more in the warmer registers. Hold on. Yeah. Don't worry, darling. I will be always there with you. Don't you just worry. And then, but. You just look at the other girl, honey. Dressed up so nicely. And then, ah. Oh, I see you. Oh, I see you. Uh, the other one, I think, is just my cousin. I just looked at her because I thought she's my cousin. You see, I had doubts. But I'm yours. And then comes the last A part in the. F now, now we go about the melody and do something in the B part. Uh, one of you was a wisecrack a couple of months ago and he said, Christian, you are, you are, um, uh, you're wrong about cocktail piano. Cocktail piano means just uh, alluding to the melody, playing it vaguely and said, well, the thing is you have to introduce the, um, uh, you have to introduce the melody before you play it more abstract and allude to it. You have to have something to allude to, which to echo to. That's the thing, you have to introduce it first. That's what we did now. And now we can refer to it and play with it. Like. See, it kind of shines through. And that I play, instead of that I play. Again, I do this on the G minor seven, C seven. You see, I can even afford, now that I introduced to you the uh, melody, your brain is already has uh, stored, has memorized the, uh, the chord structure. So, now I play G7. And I play, play G7, but where's the G? There's not even a G in the bass. It's uh, F, A, 3, and 13, or 6. So you have this voicing, rootless voicing, jazz voicings, but there's G7, I don't see any G. Isn't that anything rather F with this and this? No, it's G7. What your brain does is it completes it. Your brain is uh, already perceiving, is anticipating that this is the 2-5 of C. So from here, because it knows it from the first A part. So it's anticipating it and it's completing it. It knows that this is, that this is G7. And it's completing the bass. That's what your brain does. <coughs> hopefully, hopefully, unless you had the maybe eighth um, Lager or Jägermeister. So, um, so that's how I can if we can afford to just play voicings. And it sounds nice, just forlorn, lost in 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 the space of melancholy thoughts. Um, we have these chords. Very atmospheric. It doesn't fit here to play. We again would just wake up um, people. We don't want that. 
at that time you don't get tips anyway, you know. So, uh, and then we do the same. A rootless voicings. G minor 7 and then C7. Yes, this is a C7 and it's not an E half diminished. It's a C7, same principle, brain does the rest for change. And then I told, as I told you, the blues part, we use it. Let's exploit what the piece offers us. Oh yes, I added this chord. That is my contribution to this composition. And the first time we did. And then. Nice, huh? Nice. Quick comment on this A7. It sounds nice. Why does it sound nice? Um, how many times have I used nice now? It sounds beautiful. Beautifully nice. So we have this uh, the sharp 9. We have the A7 with the sharp 9 here. And if you remember from my previous cocktail piano tutorials, if it's the dominant of a minor chord, then the sharp 9 is just lovely. It's the A7 and we go to D minor. So we play the sharp nine. Look, uh, listen, rather, uh, unless you can listen with your eyes. See, mm. sharp nine. And then we go to the solve to the D minor seven, which is the one of A seven. At the same time, it is the two of two five of C. I stop with that very soon, just reminding you that the A7 can be dominant of a 1 that is at the same time the 2 of the next chord progression, in this case the 2-5 of C. D minor 7, G7, as we know it from the theme. And here I play around with the melody and put some dreamy melodies in it. the blues part. And here we have I cannot read my own. Um, it's a drone lick from my blues tutorials. Then we go to the B. You remember my trick? Stretch all of it, add lib, add lip, add lip. You can. It sounds really great if it's played even even slower. And then we go to I am quite a cheeky bastard here, quite cheeky, because what I play here, what is it? It's the blues scale of F. Just. And what I do is I played over these super jazzy chords. Like we have B minor, seven, E flat seven, G minor seven, and C seven. And I don't care. Great, huh? It's my invention. So don't use it. Don't play it. It's copyrighted. If you play it, you will pay. So, uh, I will stop here um, because the tutorial is getting too long and I have a weekend also and I have uh, eight kids to take care of. I have to send them begging in the streets. We have this, um, this uh, cool trick in the end where I play the F major chord. Of course, uh, a good cocktail pianist or uh, jazz pianist who wants to show some sophistication, never ever stops on the root. Like the song would finish like... No, it wouldn't. Uh, whatever. 
And then in the sh in the sheet you buy any version of this song, the last note is this one. Yeah, and they all print this one, but nobody plays it. Nobody plays it. You play everything except what is in the sheet, like. So, listen to me now. Mm. Or you play. Yeah. And here comes the other trick. So, nobody does it. You never play the final, <laughs> the root and the end. It's to totally dumb. And it uh, tells the people you are from. You are just a. Uh, Shepherd from the village, except a really sophisticated piano player. So I play the nine, and then now look at this. I play the nine. It's an F major chord. Then um, C a G, and now comes the trick. E G E. Holy moly! What the heck is that? The chord is F. Is a F major, we play the 9 here. Not the major, we just play in the arpeggio, but. And then, what the hell is this? So if we follow again, I play something, doesn't matter, but the last one's here. It's the sharp 11. It's the 11 sharp or sharp 11. I don't know what's the first name, what's the Christian name. First, uh, sharp 11. Uh, very sweet sound. Just in the end, play the sharp 11, which is a hypertension note. It's forbidden, actually. It's forbidden, unless you give it time to seduce the ear. So, if I play this anywhere, it's really too much, the sharp 11 in, in the major scale. It's forbidden, but in the end here, it's a, it has this... It's beyond verbs. Uh, it's beyond words. It uh, has this descending. Yes, it has this descending, sophisticated descending sound to it, and it tells the people you know exactly what you're doing. You know it exactly, and so you are. So I finish here. Now you have the last bit. I hope I could enlighten you um, before you go to the slow replay and learn it. And all the best. Don't panic. Bye-bye from Berlin.
I hope you liked my video and that you learned something. Now you can subscribe. Just press this subscribe button or click on another of my videos on this side. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.